Hello everyone and welcome to my channel where today we are going to be doing my 2000 hour review of For Honor. I have 2000 hours in this game and I have never really bot farmed. I've been here since the open beta, but I did not play after the very first month of the initial release. And that was partially because I was trying to find a way to get the game, get some free time, you know, stuff like that. I've seen the game go through a lot, and I'm constantly learning new things, and I'm and I can and continue to get better as the game progresses. Uh, though skill curve is questionable about this game, which uh, many of you probably already know or will soon know when uh, you play it. The game has slowly made progress ever since its initial launch. It at first came from what many people believe to be unplayable to a semi-stable game that can be fun to get good at and learn the technicalities of many of the fighters. At first this game was all about reactions and who could do what first. The game has since grown from that into who can predict what someone will do first and it might not sound all that great but the game has gotten better because of it. Not only that, the addition of dedicated servers has really improved the game to the point where I get shocked if I go back into custom games where peer-to-peer -peer is still a thing, though that's soon to be replaced by dedicated servers come marching fire. In terms of stability, it's actually not that bad given its previous iterations. In terms of balance, I might as well be protesting for net neutrality than wasting time, my time trying to tell the devs what balance is. They try to make the right moves, but often overshoot or completely ruin some things that a character has. They at one point made an excuse to not do balancing too often, as it can seem too drastic given the changes they do, but in return, their balancing is always completely off and they never seem to fix it even after getting loads of feedback. They seem to that seems to be another issue as well. Upon the community complaining about one specific aspect to some characters, the devs will seemingly ignore it or do so much more than the little things that the community asked for which results in the overshooting I had mentioned before. Examples of this are the nurse to warlord and the buffs to conquer. However, as long as you don't stick to one character and do your best to learn the game quickly, you should be fine when it comes to the balancing. The game modes are as follows. Don't admit it. I'm joking. <laughs> Elimination and Skirmish were once a semi-popular game mode, but after release they became less so due to the low gains and less stability to coordinate less uh, ability to coordinate with teammates due to not having any specific objective other than kill. Since the community was fairly small after being released a month, these game modes disappeared in terms of activity even when balancing was done to the mode several times. Dominion and Duel are currently the most popular and often where the game shines. Dominion is the game you go to if you want progression and team games. In this mode you must hold two points and keep watch over the main battlefield which serves as another objective point typically referred to as point B, though there are rare exceptions on certain maps such as the Shard. The downside to this are that some characters with crowd control built into the moveset can seemingly wipe the floor with the entire other teams. However, this, is often, this often requires a decent amount of skill or communication to properly do. On the other hand, it is also a fairly fun game mode once you look past the fact that you will be ganked on and likewise there will be times when you gank on others. Last but not least, there will be times that ganks fail and it is at these moments that, that if you are not truly filled with rage, you can't help but give respect to the enemy that managed to accomplish this task. I only recommend this game mode if you have a very high tolerance towards getting angry. Either that or you use this to build up in both uh, build up a tolerance, which in both of these cases you will absolutely love it. The game does have maps that don't uh, seem very well for what the game mode is and its limitations, but on the other end, the game mode itself is amazing and I recommend bringing friends so that you can experience fun together, whether it's complaining or trash talking. Dueling is the game mode you go to if you want a solid 1v1 experience. There really isn't much more to say about this game mode. You spawn in, you fight a single person to death for the best of five rounds, and that's about it. My only issue is that the very high tier character, uh, very high tier characters, plague this mode due to the lack of balancing, and some players will often abuse this. Caution advised. Other than that, seems fine. I don't have any issue with it. 
In terms of content, there's loads and almost saves the uh, and it almost saves the game. More is being added every week to the point where it's almost too much. They actually considered removing some of it to a seasonal thing like Fortnite. But don't worry though, you don't need to unlock every single bit of it. I have to say I thoroughly enjoy the content when it is added, unless it is battle outfits, which are the most added thing to the game. I really don't care for battle outfits all that much, but if that's your thing, go for it. When emotes, infects, and executions are added, everyone gets a bit excited and happy because they're actually really good. I give the game an A plus in terms of uh, those and related content. The future for, uh, of For Honor is always bringing new things to be excited for. Marching Fire is bringing us a new Castle Siege game mode as well as four new characters and a new PvA AI game mode if you're willing to buy the DLC. Sadly, I must recommend this because you will have to spend loads of grinding. Uh, you may also check out the website in the description below called ueo.com. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. And use the code SHARK to get 5% off. Shameless plugging. <coughs> anyway. However, again, as I said, you can get the four new characters without buying the DLC. It will just cost you a lot of grinding. Preferably on the Castle Siege game mode, which I mentioned. Uh, which, which will offer a lot of uh, gains in terms of steel, experience, and the like for every game that you complete. Which is obvious considering how long you play that specific mode. I'm personally looking forward to it, and I hope many of my fellow 400 players are as well. Would I recommend this game, given all of its faults? Absolutely! The game may have a lot of faults, but it shines as the best PvP experience you're ever going to get in terms of hand-to-hand -hand combat. I really love this game, and I will see you all there. Oh, I forgot. That's broken. <laughs> Do you have to parry every single one of them? What? Yeah. That's the top. So dumb. I've definitely parried that. Okay. That makes complete 100% sense. I definitely didn't waste a new banner. That is... I, I don't have any help at all, ever. I never have help. I have to heal, so I'm just not gonna go over to Commander at all. There's no point. I'm never gonna get any help over there. Yeah, but I was alone. I playing. wasn't alone. There was a Jang Jun and a Tian. I got killed. Oh, what happened to them? I, uh, killed? Careful, he has an attack buff. I moved my guard, but okay. Alright, now I'll fucking bum rush the Lord. I want to see if I can kick him away. No, he's gonna dodge it. I'm gonna go heal. I was so close! Nice, we did it. Ease, ease, ease. Wow, I just realized we're the entire faction. <laughs> Shout out number one. <laughs> 